Welcome, guys, to the favorite trio. We are back at it again for a new episode of Come On Now. I know you guys have probably seen some, you know, bonus episodes from the gang that I wasn't a part of. Not jealous. There's no friction here. There's no NSYNC Backstreet Boys, someone trying to go solo. That's not what's happening here. Uh, the guys wanted to get some bonus content out for you guys, and I hope you guys received it. As you guys know, when I'm not around, I am around producing, and the episodes were great. Uh, I wish I was a part of them. So that being said, we're going to jump into our post-Super Bowl edition, our, our first show post-Super Bowl. And um, first things first, let's just introduce ourselves. My name is Don, not to be confused with Don King. My hair is a lot more lavish in our pre-production meeting. Uh, my co-host Rudy said that it reminded him of Busy Bone. I'm going to miss everybody. You know, some of you young kids out there, you may not know who Bone Thugs is, but, you know, it's the first of the month. You know, go look it up on your Spotify, Apple Music. That's me. That's Don, your moderator slash host. I'm going to kick it off to the lovely members of the team that keep this thing going. Rudy, introduce yourself, please. What's going on, Donald? Great to have you back with us. Yes, my name is Rudy Rodriguez Chomont. Um, I covered high school and college sports for 17 years for the Miami Herald and Sun Sentinel, also founded InsideTheU.com, covering University of Miami. Real quick, remember, folks, thank you so much for everything that, you know, for your subscriptions and your you know, support. We appreciate it. We broke 100 on Sunday for subscribers. I know it sounds like a small number, but these are milestones to celebrate. Huh? Uh, Donald, sleep at the wheel. What about that? Hit the button for what? He about to hit the cheering button, bro. Oh, he missed, he missed the clapping. No, man, I mean, no, it's a great accomplishment. We, <clears throat> I mean, three, we, three weeks in, I mean, we're already hitting it. We have some stuff that's really tracking on, and we appreciate you. So thank you so much. Uh, you'll be able to see all of our things and, you know, follow, subscribe for Instagram, TikTok, uh, Spotify, everything. <laughs> but, yep, yeah, back to you, Donald. Nick. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, come on, Rudy Rodriguez Showmont. Nick oh. has to do. Introduce- oh, wait. Is that a championship trophy? We won. We won. <laughs> we won the night. We won. Uh, we won. It was one one in regulation. We Love went to that. PKs. Love. I put my that. son Nico in goal. Hold on. Yeah. Uh, huh? Hold on. Did you know the overtime rules? Yeah, I knew the overtime rules. Yeah. Yeah, there, there's it goes right to PKs if it's regulation. It was one one in regulation. I, I went to my son Nico to play goalie. Uh, we won the goal. The goalie. Uh, we won the PKs three to one. He 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 let the first one get through. Then we scored. He then he stopped the next three. We scored three straight times, back to back, baby. So now I'm being told I have to do this for a three peat like Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to bring that in there. Off to you, Nick. Oh, off to me. Um, y'all don't know who I am, man. Who I am, man. It's in Mother F and T coming from live from the 305. Y'all know how I get down. Hey, real talk, man. It's Nick Taylor, man. Three time Great Cup champion, former NFL player, arena football, Division One basketball player, well decorated. And, you know, we had to talk sports again and a little bit of some other things. All right, guys, we're going, to dive, we're going to dive right in. We're not going to waste any more time. This is kind of going to be a condensed episode because we've been hitting you guys one-two punch with a lot of content lately, and I'm glad that you guys are appreciating it. We see the comments. We see the impressions. We see everything. Thank you, guys. We're growing this thing slowly. We're not in competition with anyone but ourselves. With that being said, we're going to jump into the first topic. It's not really a question. It's more of a thought. I want to see what my guys' thoughts are. NFL Hall of Fame inductees. There's a lot that's been said in our group chat about these these selections. I want to hear the guys riff. What what are you thinking? Um, let's start off with I think everybody's okay with it. Um, for the most part, but I know what the problem will be. It will be with Devin Hester. The Devin Hester deserved to be in, and I'm gonna say he affected the game and impacted the game. Probably like no one else who didn't have a real position. He was a special team, but he was really special on special teams. He had 20 touchdowns just on special teams. He had 11 his first two years alone. 
He made opposing teams kick the ball out of bounds. He made punters scared out of their shoes. And it affected the whole game because now his offense got the ball in great field position. So they were basically in field goal range most times just because of his threat of Devin Hester later on in his career. His first two years, they gave him the ball. They kicked it to him. After that, you didn't really give the ball. You didn't really kick the ball at Devin Hester. You did whatever you had to do to keep the ball away from him. So his impact on the field was amazing just because of those simple things right there. He changed the field position completely for whatever team he was on. He made Rex Grossman look like a capable quarterback because he got them to the Super Bowl. And a lot of that had to do with their defense, but it had to do with they they had a short field a lot of the times. Offense already got three points on the board. Can we get seven? He was that type of player on the field. And um, we're going to go to uh, Reggie Wayne. Why did Reggie Wayne get in? Because Reggie Wayne was probably – one of the biggest snubs because he's been doing it for a long time. Probably had like eight or nine 1,000 yard seasons, I believe, a couple 1,500s in there. And he was amazing. Once uh, Marvin Harrison was off the team or not there anymore, he became Peyton Manning number one. So should he be in there? I would say so. But was his impact is quite as impactful as Devin Hester? I'm going to say no. I have no problem, no qualms. I have no, no problems with Devin Hester being there just because his impact on the game was top tier. So compared to his position to Reggie Wayne position, he was higher than Reggie Wayne because he was the best at what he did. Reggie Wayne was probably about, let's see, around 10 to 15 at what he did in his career. If you look at all the receivers, yes, Rudy, I know you're looking a little crazy. We can name the receivers. We can name Randy Moss. We can name Jerry Rice. We can name Marvin Harrison. We can name Andre Johnson. We can name you know, quite a lot of receivers that are, that are ahead of Reggie Wayne. Can we not? Go ahead. Speak up. Um, well, my reaction is to the receivers when he played, not to of all time, because I base it on when you played, because I think all the receiver numbers today are all fluffy. So I don't think they should be used when comparing them to people that played 20 years ago. Um, mind you, Jerry Rice will never have his numbers broken. That's how crazy it is. And he did yeah. that when in, in, a, in a generation, in an era when you weren't throwing the ball 50 times a game. But you know what I'm going to say about that era, though? You only had two receivers out there. So now you're spreading the ball around amongst four to five receivers. Back then you were spreading the ball to two receivers, one tight end. That was who's, the, who's the Dolphins' third receiver? Uh, who's the Chiefs' third receiver? The, uh, McCall. <laughs> who's the first one? Receiver Rice, no, Kelsey. Kelsey, he's the first receiver. No. He's the tight end. And he's the tight end. Okay, well, he's, he's the tight end. Receiver. No, let's not get to it. He's the receiver. He's the number one target. And then we're gonna go to Rasheed Rice. Then we're gonna go to. Uh, I don't even know. Where's, 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 where's Kadarius Tony on that? Kadarius Tony left out, out, left bench. Oh. He said, fuck you, pussies. I'm not hurt. I'm not supposed to be playing. What the hell are y'all talking about? Y'all got the wrong information on me. And I, he just messing up his whole career. But that's besides the point. Um, back then, you only had two receivers out there. So even though the, the, the numbers are more fluffed now because they throw the ball a lot back then, they threw the ball substantially okay. But there was only two receivers you were throwing to. You lined up in eye formation with a tight end and – and you had two receivers out there. That was the that was the base set. You occasionally went three receivers back then, but not more than that. So the numbers kind of equal out. Every time everything equals out, really. I, I, look, I'm I'll go through the whole list real fast. Andre Johnson made it, Patrick Willis made it, Dwight Free made it, Devin Hester, Julius Peppers. I'm not looking at the guys that made it from the old time. Oh, no, 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 no. Actually there's more than one. Um, Steve McMichael made it with the old timers committee or something. And this other guy, yeah, from, okay. that's you know, no, no, I have no problem with that. No, I have no problem. With that. I think Patrick Willis making it's ridiculous. He only played seven years. He didn't play long enough. Part of being a hall of famer to me, and, I mean, and maybe I'll correct it, make, make sure it's seven years, but I know no. he didn't get, I know he didn't get to 10. I know it was like seven, no, eight no, years. No way, no way, no way. What? No way, what? No way he got the 10. Yeah. He, he played seven, eight years max. And yeah, for four or five years, he was an absolute monster. You got to play longer than that. Like, I'm actually shocked that he made it. That that one was the one, that one is the equivalent of Terrell Davis making the Hall of Fame, which I thought should never have happened. You got to play longer than seven years, man. Seven, eight years. I don't care if you're the best at your position for five of those years. 
for three of those years, or even the league MVP. It, longevity matters. And if you only last seven years, like you're getting in there ahead of people that have played 15, you know, I, I, the, the dev, so that's, that's one where I have an issue with, look, did he, if he played for 12, would I have, 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 would have, would I have an argument? No, I think he was an, he was a, a sensational linebacker. And I don't know what ballot he made it on, but the fact that Zach Thomas waited almost 10 years to make the Hall of Fame last year with the numbers he put up and Patrick Willis makes it on a seven year career is kind of ridiculous. Eight years, but you could say seven because he, I, I think okay. he got his eight years. Right. He only played like six games. So, like the fact that Zach Thomas waited so long, I don't know how long Patrick Willis waited, um, but I, I, <clears throat> yeah, Zach Thomas waited almost almost ten years. Now, Andre Johnson, I'm a Hurricanes fan. I have no problem Miami Hurricanes making the Hall of Fame. I, I think it's great. Andre Johnson was that dude. He was a beast. Reggie Wayne was good as hell, man. He was. Like like Reggie Wayne was so good. He was steady. He he was solid. And, and yeah, he was number one receiver for probably five years. And 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 people say, oh, he played with Peyton Manning. I don't care who you played with. I don't care who you played with. Jerry Rice played with Joe Montana, but who made who better? I think Jerry Rice made Joe Montana better than Joe Montana making Jerry Rice better. Let's just be real. You know, that's my opinion. Whereas Mark Clayton and Mark Duper played with Dan Marino, Marino made those dudes look like stars. Do you, you know. Think- do you think I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you think that because of Reggie Wayne not being like a terrifying receiver, like he didn't have the speed that just scared you? Do you think that that was a you know part of it? Like it, probably. You get it, like that, probably. That, that, well, that's a factor. Like did you it, hear the it, 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 the game plan? I know the game plan was about Reggie Wayne, but it wasn't like he's going to take the top off and he's going to go for forty or you know we had a have a safety way over the top. No, we had to cover intermediate routes for him. He was a great route runner. No, I, 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 it's probable that that had something to do with it. But I, I just, look, I love Devin Hester, man. Devin Hester gave me some amazing memories as a Hurricanes fan, watching him versus Louisville, Florida, the returns he made in those games. Just, I just watched a highlight thing of this guy. I mean, it was unbelievable. And But that does not trump or go over a guy who's catching 100 passes a season for – 14, 15 years to me. Like, it, it doesn't. It's not more valuable than a receiver who's catching 100 balls a season. You can look right now. There might be only a handful of guys that caught 100 passes this year. So to see what he did, and now we're, I think we're on year six with him. Like, it's it's to the point where Hester just got put in on year three. Um, Andre Johnson, I think, was year, two, year three. You know, I think Julius Peppers deservedly so. Dwight Freeney deservedly so. Um, the one that, the one that, huh? Those were terrible. Oh, yeah. Uh, now, the one that really shocked me more than even Reggie Wayne is, um, or I'm sorry, than Patrick Willis, is Antonio Gates. Antonio Gates was considered the best tight end in football for a long time of his career. And so for him not to make it, it just shows, it's just, it's just, do they really think that Hester was better than Gates? Do they think that? Okay. That they think that, that um, Willis was better than Gates for his position? I, so, so they're all great players. So they're my, all great players. My counter to to, Hef, to Hester would be, even though he only scored twenty touchdowns, I bet he was responsible for his team getting about a hundred touchdowns because of the field position they started oh, with. Even though I only understand. Won touchdowns, you know, ones that he broke all the way down to the forty, or you know, the ones that he got to the ten yard line, he didn't quite get in, but he put the offense in a position where they scored in one or two or three plays just because. Of his threat that he that he that he's literally scared people off the field. I mean, <laughs> I don't know anything that was more terrifying than, than Devin Hester. Maybe Steph Curry wide open from three is more I, terrifying. I can I, I only hope that Hester making it does not open up some like floodgate of special team players. No, 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 no. Who, no who return kicks. I not- just hope it doesn't because like, I'm going to be real with you. If Evan Hester's in the Hall of Fame, I think Santana Moss should be considered for the Hall of Fame because he was terrifying. He wasn't Devin Hester terrifying, but he was terrifying as a receiver and a return man. I mean, at UM, Santana Moss was, God, petrifying for people. Yeah, but, you know, um, yeah, I understand. So, I mean, overall, I don't, I don't have much of a problem with it. I just think that I, I, don't, I don't know if there's a five man cap or because, like, in baseball, they can do like zero, or yeah, they can do like 10. 
Um, I don't know if there's a cap on how many you can put in in the NFL um, or how they actually tally, tally up these votes. But to me, Antonio Gates and Reggie Wayne belong in this class as well. Antonio Gates will get in. I don't think he will wait too much longer because he was amazing, <laughs> man. It was, it was nothing you could do with him, man. He was <laughs> like, would Travis Kelsey be a first ballot Hall of Famer? Yes, no doubt. To me, Antonio Gates was Travis Kelsey well, before him. Yeah, he Travis was. Kelsey he was. was. I think, I think, but when you look at when you look at Kelsey, you also have to understand the championships is going to play a factor. Nobody, no matter what we say, championships freaking matter in everybody's eyes. I, like how you feel, like oh, Dennis Rodman shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame, but he got those championships, and he was like a big part of it. Like you so feel on, on on this Dave list, Green shouldn't be part of it because he's not. I, I, Technically, um, they're not Hall of Fame players. These five dudes, the only guy that won a championship, I think, is Dwight Freeney. Football's different. You just said championships matter, man. No, no, but, we, but there's different. But this is a different sport. I mean, we're going to oh, because because to me, if you're if you're holding championships on Antonio Gates, like come on, man. he didn't play with uh, he didn't play with Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> I mean, he told yeah. me Rivers was better than Ben Roethlisberger. Let's get that. Game. He is, and I don't think, and and there's only one guy, and yeah, I still think he was. I mean, you're, you're talking 955 catches, 11,841, 116 touchdowns. And you're making that dude wait? My God. Uh, well, I mean, overall, they, congratulations to all those guys. They're all deser- they all deserve it. They all deserve it. They all deserve it. All they deserve it. We got two, we got two more Hurricanes in the Hall of Fame. I know you love that, Rudy. I know you love that. Should have been three. Should have oh been God. three. We're going we're gonna to pause there. We're going to pause there on the extra. UM players. We're not gonna throw another UM player oh, in there. That's okay, man. That's that's how I do sometimes. Uh, so um, what we're gonna do? We're gonna dive into a next section, and I feel like the guys threw me a bone. <laughs> I got. I feel like the guys threw me a bone. We're gonna talk about Usher's memorable, memorable, legendary halftime performance. I saw. A report. I'm not going to name the publication because it's blasphemous, and I'm not going to call out the writer about the top 30 halftime performances of all time. Usher was why, 22. Why not? Why not? You should. That's our job. I'm not going to do that. Usher was 22. If you saw some of the the lackluster performances that were above him, <laughs> hey Nick, Nick, look at my face. <laughs> look at no, my face. no, um, no. It's been crazy today, son. I'm I'm going to bring out my New York accent beat. It's been crazy today, son. Well, These well, people out here, they've yeah. been telling me that they've been telling me that yeah. that, that, that concert, well, that, that performance wasn't good. They've oh. been out here on the social media oh. and they've been out here telling us, son. Oh, oh my God. Us, okay. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to dive in here and do something. I know you've been ready for this one. You, I, you, I, listen. Hey, when, hey, when I, hey, hey, fan, hey, everybody who subscribe and pay attention, we held this topic from yesterday because, you know, we dove in, but, you know, Donald wasn't there. And we held this topic because this is near and dear to Donald Hart because they call him Slusher. He told y'all that last time. Because he's not really Usher. Not, not, kinda, not as refined. Not as refined. Kind of refined uh, and I'm like a Seven Eleven usher, so, so that's usher. So Donald was back then, and in, in, <laughs> he was in high school. Oh, why wow, you telling the story? A, and oh. Donald did a whole concert in the middle of a class. He just bust out everything with my ex girlfriend. He he bust out with that. And since that moment, he's been slusher, not usher. So it's kind of near and dear to him, guys. So um. He got kicked out of class that day. <laughs> he, they, they sent him to see his side. You, you got to go. You can't be in class no more. You're wilding. You're tripping. You got to go. Um, so this is near and dare. So we waited to bring this up. So I know Donald has some remarks about this concert, and he's going to tell us how he really feels. Tell um, me how you feel, son. I, I'm, I'm sorry, Thank real you, quick. Nick. Thank you I for giving for that the listeners and viewers. Jesus, I feel so old. I feel uh, so old. Hey, Thank you for doing this. No, no, thank you, Nick, for giving the listeners and viewers TMI. You're 2005. Two Usher's been around for like 25 years. That's crazy. No, like I'm 30. So, we're, we're, Rudy, Rudy, <laughs> um, I'm going to give you a little tidbit. You may not know this. You know, we're, we're, we're family, but you, you may not know this. Um, the Confessions album, in my mind, was about my life. Uh-huh. It was not about my life, but in my mind, it was about my life. 
Um, I was not performing any coitus with any women at the time. I was not getting any. I was there was no sexual activity happening in my bed at the time. But in my mind, I had a baby on the way, <laughs> and I was in LA with my ex girlfriend. That's what was going on in my mind. All right. So fast forward to 2024. From 2004, uh, I get I I I go on you know a little website because I read the first hour of every day of my life, and I see in the comments on you know the complexes the all these different notifications. People are like that performance wasn't all that. Then I click on their page and they're from Middle Tennessee. And they listen to Jelly Roll. And it's like, you don't even, you're not even a part of the same, like, you don't understand the genre. Did, did you see them on roller skates? Uh, like, do, did you see Alicia Keys? Did you, my boo? My boo? Did you, did you hear? Did, did you see him bring out, Lu see, some of you kids didn't know Ludacris rapped. You probably thought, that's the kid from Fast and Furious. And we're like, no, no, he's a superstar. Ludacris is a superstar. So it's like you probably saw the bald head guy with the weird uh, uh, top hat costume on him. You're like, who that is? That's Jermaine Dupre. He's a superstar producer. You young kids didn't know who that was. But for anyone that grew up in the 90s or 2000s, that was such an amazing performance because it showed us he has so many records. Like, for, first of all, he had three wardrobe changes. He rode roller skates. He had no audio background. He was singing live. He had multiple dancers. He he had to go through all these sessions and progressions and and just got everybody excited. One thing I have learned in, in living in this divided country that we're in, people are just not going to like certain things. I don't want to get uh, racial, but some people are just not going to like certain things. They want uh, Kenny Chesney every half time. Yeah. Performance. They want. Oh, let me get let me get Blake Shelton every halftime performance. Nick, Nick, that's what they want. Hey, hey, Blake Shelton got a rap song too, by the way. Listen, but <laughs> hey, listen, but that's that's just what they want. They want Morgan Wallen, who I actually like, I like Morgan Wallen. But that's who they want. And I I couldn't help but notice the um the, the online chatter. Uh, listeners and viewers, I don't have social media. That's just my decision. But you know, you can read other forums. And I saw 2025, the chatter, it's going to be in New Orleans. And they want Little Wayne to perform. And I thought to myself, Whoa. I clutched my pearls. Whoa. I said, if they didn't like Usher. What you did? I you, clutched my pearls. Your pearls. I clutched my pearls. I clutched my pearls. If they didn't approve of Usher, what are they going to oh do God. with Little Wayne? Wheezy F Baby. I want Master P, baby. man. Is in front of a hundred million people. What are they? What are they gonna? What is conservative America gonna Whoa. say when Weezy? We F just did it for one. What did no, he say? Master P. Master P. Master P. No limit soldiers. Can Listen. you imagine that being in the Super Bowl? But <laughs> Rudy, thank you for bringing that. They might actually get. Some, is is his brother still in prison? Who <laughs> murders? Not be the last motherfucker to yeah. be a motherfucking black person show up. <laughs> But, you know, as, as you guys know, Rock Nation produces it. That's Jay-Z's company. So, you know, <laughs> if, if he wants to, you know, put stick a middle finger up to middle America, he'll go get mass, cash money and no limit and do like a a clash of hits. No make limit and cash say, money. Put them together. Make, and do like, Make them say, uh, and back that ass up. Together. together. Juvenile. <laughs> so I, I want to draw thieves. You know, will they, will they take Mister out of jail? Um, we're gonna leave him in jail because he's there. For, <laughs> he's there for rape, so we're gonna leave him. We're gonna twice, leave him. twice. We're gonna, leave, we're gonna leave him there. But um, I just I'm saying all this to say Usher was amazing. Uh, some of you uh, I'm not gonna say imbeciles. I'm not gonna say idiots. I'm not gonna say uh, low thinking human beings that weren't a fan. You guys have your own acquired taste, and you're allowed to have it. As a kid that grew up in the 90s, um, I remember my way. I remember Kamora Lee Simmons being in his video in the drop top port. Um, when someone asked me, where's Usher at 7 o'clock? And I would say in the drop top, cruising the streets. That's what I would say. So 
Usher was amazing. Um, I haven't gone to his show yet. I didn't get a chance to go to his Las Vegas residency, but I will be going to his show this year, maybe seven times, a cool seven in different cities. So if you guys see me, say, come on now. And I'm going to say, <laughs> what's up? What's up? Um, so that's basically it. That's my that's my uh, Usher rant for you guys. It was amazing. And anyone that says he wasn't, you can um, run in traffic. That's harsh. That's harsh. Um, right. Damn. Yeah, we're going to leave it there. We're going to leave it there. Y'all, y'all really hurt Donald with that because he, he won't even speak that much. So y'all just made him come out the turtle shell. Raphael, Donatello. Yeah. <laughs> Rudy, you want to go or you want me to go first? I'll go quick because I'm old. And I, I mean, I, I thought, look, I don't care about the halftime show, honestly. I get I get so tired of how people, I mean, sorry. I don't, I, I can't stand that it takes an hour to get back on the field. And I think that has a major impact on how games can go. It is the Super Bowl. I would actually much rather they do that show before the game. That's just a thought because having these guys sit in the locker room for almost an hour when they're kicking the crap out of somebody, that makes a difference. And I think it's made a difference multiple times in multiple Super Bowls. That said, I thought he did a good job. I'm not an Usher fan the way Donald is. Um, I think he's good. Um, I thought it was okay. I was entertained. I think people, when they make their statements, it's just based on the, tip, the type of music that they like or dislike. I mean, because when they had rock bands up there, I think it's brutal. And I don't even, I, I watch it even less. Um, like, I, I, I don't even pay attention to it. I might leave the room for 20 minutes because it's a waste of my time. You know, I remember when they, I remember Prince was there once. I, I was never a Prince fan, never understood this infatuation with Prince. I'm just being honest, I, I did it. I still don't personally. What did he do a job? I thought I was like, wait, did he just put on roller skates? Like, how the hell did he put on roller skates that damn fast? I can't put my shoes on that. I can't put on my slides that fast. This man had roller skates like within ten seconds on his feet. I don't know how that was done. <clears throat> That's pretty remarkable. And the war the wardrobe changes so quickly. Um, I. I what was uh, I, I? I was hoping that they might get into something of ludicrous, where you know, gosh, what could have been there with ludicrous? They could have been Welcome to Atlanta, but I mean, I guess you know, it's not here, so I mean, not, it's, it's it's with Jermaine Dupri was there as well, so they could have um, started it off like that. Something how yeah, they put the music keys on, they they gave her yeah. a little section in the name. Yeah. I mean, heck, most people forgot Alicia Keys was a singer, for Christ's sake. She's been gone for so long. I mean, in terms of performing, as far as I know. Uh, but he did a good job. I mean, kudos to him. Congratulations to him. Uh, I don't know that I'm going to pay 800 bucks to go watch him perform in Miami in October. I think it's in October. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah. yeah you, I, I'm, have, glad Donald, I'm glad Donald got wife, to enjoy it. If you have a wife and you do have a... She doesn't care about Usher like that. What? Nah, man. So let me nah. let me let me tell y'all how I. I'd rather I'd rather I'd rather listen to Bell Biv DeVoe and uh, you know Joe to see and oh yeah and, uh, you know and I mean Ooh, if, yeah. if, R, if if R Kelly wasn't in, in locked up in some federal prison, um, hey. I, I mean R Kelly might be the greatest R and B singer in, ever subject, in my life. Touchy subject, Rudy. Touchy subject. I mean, Nick will play it till Alaska. We know that. I will play motherfucking R. Kelly. I won't play Robert, but I'll play R. Kelly. I'll play. I'll play. I'll play R. Kelly all day. All mother. TP two. You know how much? How much? Mm-hmm, I got off for of TP two in the back seat of my Malibu. Nick, Nick, what is? Mm-hmm. What is? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What is mm-hmm. 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 I got in the back seat of my Malibu yeah. back. Then when Quid- TP2 came out, do you understand? I try to sing those songs myself. Like one, welcome to my. So hey, two. Yeah. I'll stop there. That's the singing. Uh, That's my uh, singing. Hey, listen here, man. Usher, listen here. I ain't mad at Usher, man. He had my girl hot and ready like a Krispy Kreme donut. Hot and ready. I I ain't mad at that. I go, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to parlay that into some loving for Nick Taylor. Y'all think I'm going to hate on him? Heck no. I'm going to parlay that. Double down, parlay, add it to the to, add it to the bet quota. Because I'm, I'm riding with Usher, man. But Usher was amazing, man. The mother of lover came out there like Rashad from ATL on Mother Lover Skates. 
him and Nunu was out there, they were getting it in, getting it in, that cascade. The whole cascade came out right there. And I ain't mad at that. How can you be mad at him celebrating his the city of ATL? How can you be mad that he let Alicia Keys rock the mic? And then they came back and hit it with my boo. I knew that was coming. And then he had Luda out there. He had CeeLo out there. I mean, Jermaine Dupree out there. Uh, I thought, I thought, I thought, I thought for a second that that was CeeLo for sure. I said, what, what song, what, what song I should do with CeeLo? I ain't even know. Okay. So what you're saying is that uh, Jermaine Dupree got really fat. I didn't because because the people people in my where I was were like, who is that? Said, that's Jermaine Dupree. So I said that C-Lo. is I said, C-Lo. okay. I didn't know CeeLo was with ATL like that, but obviously not. It was Jermaine Dupree, and then he came out there with Luda. Man, he had little John out there rocking in the motherfucking in the motherfucking with the fans and, and the crowd. Come on, man. Yeah, I had an ATL stump a freaking shoot. And I, and I thought I was there with them at ATL and I was having the time of my life. I thought I was I was Rashad skating with Nunu. And it was just a great experience, man. And people are like, it was 15 minutes. What much more do you want? He's gonna it's gonna be short, you know, little verses of everything. He's trying to get everybody involved. And he did that very well. Everybody was involved. But it's only 15 minutes, guys. It's not his concert. You want to go to his fucking concert? Go to his damn concert. He has a concert in different places now. He left the he lost he left Las Vegas residency, and now he's going to different places. And you know, now I'm going to ATL, and I'm gonna parlay that again. <laughs> Double down with that bet. I am ready, baby. I am ready. As long as he don't go grab my girl, like he did Alicia. You better buy a cheaper ticket, man. We will be up there in the three. No, we'll be there. No, actually, we're seeing him in Miami. I, I, I just forgot. We actually are seeing him in Miami. We're gonna have a good time, man. But he's a he's an amazing artist. Um, I don't know much what what much more you want. He took his shirt off. He had a little. It wasn't a six pack. He had a, he had like the perfect keg belly. <laughs> like it was a, I don't know. We're gonna, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna jump off that. We're gonna jump off that right there. Uh, thank you guys for Don, giving Donald. Me that. Did you did you throw your your boxers at the television screen? No, I had a jersey. <laughs> I had a jersey. I threw that. I threw that. But I was da- absolutely dancing though. I was dancing in my living room. With my oh phone. my god! So, with that being said, man, thank you guys for throwing on a section that I can get passionate about. And um, if you see me out there at the Usher concert, all you have to say is, "Come on now." And I'm going to get excited to speak to you. Uh, with that being said, we're going to go on to one of our colorful, colorful topics and sections of the show. The one that. Rudy, Rudy, Rudy. That's, that's the crowd. And it's four of them that are saying that because the rest hate him. The rest hate him. That that are getting excited for Rudy's rant. I tell you what, the people so, in Iowa love me. That being said, people in Iowa Rudy, are loving me right now. Stage that, they they and, love what I had to say about Caitlin and Clark. Speak about what's on your mind this week. Floor is yours. Yeah, those Iowa folks love me. They love that I've defended Caitlin Clark's honor. Um, let me tell you something. I don't have a whole lot this week, but I got one thing. Because it hasn't been a week to get really pissed off about nothing that really not at my craw or whatever you want to say, except for the fact that we actually took care of that on Friday. Talking about LeBron James. LeBron James. God damn it, man. This guy. Oh, my God. LeBron James. I, I, I... This man does not show up at Kobe Bryant's statue presentation. And Nick goes into this thing soliloquy about what you're, we don't know what he was doing. And I had to explain to Nick, which he still doesn't seem to understand that there's thing, nothing in life is an obligation, but there are things that you should do for at least for this, the, the one for respect and two for optics. As the face of the team, he doesn't show up to the, to the, as the face of the team, he doesn't show up to this thing. Then 
<clears throat> Nick says he could have been getting a massage and doing his warm up or whatever the hell he might have been doing. I said mama mentality. We, we, we don't know. Yeah, yeah. Mama mentality. I mean, there were times where Kobe Bryant didn't have his pregame work workout. But because he was in court. Really. Yeah, you know what? It, whatever it might be. I, I hope that LeBron James, when he is, has his Hall of Fame speech, does not. Ho- I, 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 haven't finished, I haven't finished my rant yet. You're already cutting me off. Sorry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I tell you what. So he skips Dwayne Wade's thing, his Hall of Fame induction. The next day he is, people will say, oh, his son has just had a heart attack. His son had a heart attack 19 days earlier, and yet he was hanging out with Draymond Green the day after Dwayne Wade's induction ceremony. When Bill Russell died, he did not tweet, he didn't, even though we know LeBron tweets about every topic under the sun. He's an expert in the Dallas Cowboys. He's an expert on this. He's an expert on politics, even though he can barely speak English right now. There was a thing that I, I read recently where uh, – People, there was a reason why people said that. <laughs> why, why people like Kobe Bryant more than LeBron? Because Kobe Bryant mastered five languages and LeBron still hasn't mastered one. <laughs> that was funny. I'm sorry. Oh, I saw that on Jason Whitlock, by the way. Um, of course. That was hilarious. Now, I will say this. He doesn't go to Kobe's thing, but yet he is at the Super Bowl front and center. I guess that was more important to him than Kobe Bryant and his, maybe he had a friendship, maybe he didn't, but I'm not shocked that he was at the Super Bowl. But the fact that three days ago, you were not at your former Olympic teammates statue ceremony, and I'm sure all the bronze sexuals will come for me again and defend his honor and say, he can do what he wants to do. And Nick will say, he, it's his choice. Yes, it's his choice. The optics of you being at the Super Bowl two days later, because this was on a Thursday, so Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It, you know he was probably in freaking Vegas on Saturday. And, of course, he's at the Super Bowl, and he's seen. So anyone that says that he may have been hiding at Kobe's event, clearly don't know LeBron very well. The guy continues to show you why he's a world-class piece of shit. He continues to show you why he has no fucking character whatsoever when it comes to anything beyond himself. The narcissistic level of this man goes like, it's total vision on me, 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 me. That's what it comes down to. Maybe one day when someone doesn't show up to his Hall of Fame or his honors or his statues or whatever the heck it is, when they don't show up, maybe at that, at that point he'll start to understand Pay respect to people that have helped you along the way. Pay respect to people that cared about you, sacrificed for you. But clearly, being at the Super Bowl was more important than going to Kobe's event. That's all I got to say. Oh, by the way, he just beat the hell out of the Milwaukee Bucks, which is beautiful, without Jimmy Butler. But, yeah, LeBron, do better, my guy. Rudy. Do better, my guy. Like, have some sense. Have some sense. You're too, you're too, you're too smart to make – so many decisions back to back to back to back that make you look like straight up horseshit. In the honor of Kobe Bryant, did he have a game that day? I don't give a shit. The thing was at one o'clock in the afternoon, bro. The game is at seven at night. It doesn't take you freaking. It was a 30 minute event. You making excuses for this bullshit. My Anyone with sense. Anyone with sense would have been there. Anybody. And you know, I don't know why Anthony Davis wasn't there because he sucks off LeBron's left nut. And he follows whatever LeBron does. So don't sit here and tell me, well, was AD there? That's what you asked me. Was AD what? there? Was, no, was, he wasn't there because was, LeBron, his, his daddy LeBron. Was D-Lo there? Who gives a shit about D-Lo? I don't, Dwayne Wade was there. He has been playing for the Lakers. He, don't, he wasn't at the stadium. He had to physically drive there. That's crazy, Rudy. Yeah. You know what? Austin Reeves, respect my guy. Rui Hachimura, respect my guy. Darvin Ham. Um, the, what was the freaking other assistant there? You talking about uh, um, LeBron's best friend? Yeah, yeah, the, um, when they when they came for Toronto. With so the- don't sit here and tell me about how. Now I think it's embarrassing actually that the whole team wasn't there. It's embarrassing. As a franchise, I'm shocked that Jimmy Buss didn't make all them stupid idiots be there. Whoa! But if, whoa. You let, if you let LeBron James make a decision, you already know he's gonna make, he's gonna make the wrong one. But, Rudy, they had a game that night. They had a game at 7 o'clock at night, Nick. They didn't need six hours for him to freaking have his butt massage. What if he, had to, be, what if he had to go Stop. pick up his kid from Vegas? Oh, you think that man picks up anyone's kids? Shut up. 
Stop it. The man is family. He's picking up his kid. Get the f- Get the f- oh my god! You mean that he's picking up his seventeen-year-old from high school? No, he has a young daughter. Maybe. Yeah, you think his wife or his fourteen nannies don't do that shit? Come maybe. on, man. Maybe. Let's be with the nonsense. Maybe you're not. Take, take your bronze sexual fucking dress off, please. I don't have god, a bronze geez. sexual dress. I have an <sighs> open mind to the world, Rudy, and you are enclosed. And I think you need to open. Are, 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 are you on the Martin Lawrence Wusa shit right now from Bad Boys back in the day? Hey, I'm just saying, Rudy, the man, the man wasn't obligated to be there. Should he, could he have been there? Could he have been there? But we, we don't know (laughs) what he had planned or what was going on for that man on that day. Maybe his kid had a a preschool. A, 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 a dance rehearsal that we don't know about. We don't know. You, okay, so yeah, so before it's mama mentality, now it's preschool mentality. Pre- I'm sorry, preschool rehearsal, dance rehearsal mentality. F-O- Pick one. You're F-O- like flipping it all around now, bro. Yeah, I'm over everything. Don't do that. To, don't do that to LeBron, Rudy. Don't do that to LeBron. Oh, that was a, that was a, that, that, that was that was a. But first, yeah. of all, I'm just all right. I'm being serious right now. We don't know. Should he have been there? I'm gonna actually agree with you, Rudy. They should have been there just for the optics of it. But we know LeBron moves to his own jumps. He looks selfish at times, and uh, people are not gonna like him regardless. LeBron could have been there, and people would still find a way. Why did he go there? Because now he's overshadowing Kobe's ceremony. You anyone know. that's anyone that says that is dumb. But that, that's that's hey, a real thought. That's a real thought. No, anyone that said. No, anyone that says that about him for showing up and saying, oh, now he's still the spotlight, they're idiots. These things have been said about LeBron for anything. Anything he does is get maximized to the umpteenth degree. And he could have been there and they're like, why is he there? He's overshadowed. Well, you know you know how you don't overshadow? You just go and you shut the hell up. You don't ask for and you don't get interviewed by anybody. You just show your face. You're there and you leave. Really? That's how you avoid being the guy that overshadows it. You know when you're the best player of all time, the, the boat. The boat, the best player of all time. That somebody, somebody's gonna come up to you and ask you a question, and then you're you walk off. Well, no, you're not. No, they gotta go through the. They gotta go through their media team first. I'm just trying to get a player no, for us. So, so now he's a boat. So now you want him to be a dick for not answering? Come on, Rudy, pick pick what you want from LeBron. A dick for not answering? Yeah. Who's talking about taking an interview? I don't care if he doesn't get interviewed. I never cared about that. Wow. I've never cared about whether he, he gets interviewed or not. I think there are plenty of times where you should say, screw the interview, but he, he's required to by his job or he'll get fined. Mm. Okay, that's one obligation he does have, which Whoa. he does fulfill. He Whoa. does fulfill that obligation. Look at you because, using my word. Because he will get fined if he doesn't. Yeah. Um, but in that particular situation, no one was uh, – that in that situation, you don't I, – I don't, you don't get interviewed. Just go, show your face, and leave. I mean – there were guys that were there. I mean, the fact that Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who's walking on a cane and, and had just broken his leg like a month and a half ago, dealing with mad health problems, was there. I just think it's a bad look. But, I mean, Kareem, you know, especially when especially when you're at the Super Bowl two days, three days later. But I'm good. He didn't have a game, and he had a day off after that. Come on now. Not a man I, I'm, I'm convinced on that, winning, and now you have a problem. That's the problem. so. I'm, well, how much focus is that? You're at the Super Bowl. You think he didn't go to the? You didn't, you think he wasn't at the Kansas City Chiefs after party? No, he was. No, but he could have been because he had a day off the next day. And then yeah, I know. Didn't play to the following. Why? Why wasn't he like resting? He's old. All right, Rudy. Now, come on. Next topic, Donald. Bring us in. Bring us in. Listen, listen, guys. Rudy, thank you so much for, um, once again, another colorful yet aggressive LeBron take on Rudy's rants. Uh, We're going to leave that there. This week, guys, I know you guys are getting excited and you're probably going to cry. We're not going to have a Don's Dines because I was able to go off on all of you guys about Usher. Leave his name out of your mouth. Shout out to Will Smith. You can can cut on him, bro. Leave, leave, leave my goddamn singer's name out of your mouth. Shout out to Usher. Um, we have that. that being said, we are going to discuss the NBA All-Star Weekend is coming up. 
I will truly say I'm excited for one thing, and that is Steph Curry versus Sabrina Anasco. I hope I'm saying her name right. Uh, for a three-point shootout, nothing else about this weekend excites me. It's in Indianapolis. All I know about Indianapolis are the Colts and That's what you're excited for? I believe Daytona NASCAR. I don't know what else they do there. I think they, they uh, Paul George told me that he does a lot of fishing while he's there. So I don't even know why it's there. Um, hey, Rudy, fun fact. Fun, fun fact, Rudy. You know the last time the NBA All-Star was in Miami was in the 90s? Yeah, 1991 or two. How is that even it? possible? Rudy was 32. I was fourteen. I was fourteen years old, man. Thirteen, fourteen years old. Anyway, I remember it. That, I remember it. How is that possible? How? Miami. It's the last time you've been in. The, makes no sense. Um, Adam Silver. Makes no sense. That's I'm gonna call crazy. you. I'm gonna call Why? you, Adam. Why Adam does Moore. Miami have an All Star game every ten years? It doesn't, ten it doesn't years. make sense. It's Miami. It, it, it's, but, it's like having the Super Bowl here every like every but I seven digress. years. Um, guys, this is gonna be a twofer. I want you guys to tell me how you feel about NBA All-Star and um, the big fight that's been announced pay-per-view for NBA All-Star Weekend between Shannon Sharp and Mike Epps. Let me, let me, let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys think. Man, the, 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 the NBA All-Star has fallen off, man. It's not what we, we grew up on. All the top players not being scared to compete in dunk contests. Like, imagine LeBron in a dunk contest. LeBron could literally do a regular two-hand standing dunk, and everybody would give him a nine. You just need that all-star. Like, if you're in an all-star game, you should be in, like, the contest, bro. Like, we shouldn't be getting Chick Chippewa from, from fucking the D-League to come and save the dunk contest. We need, we need, we need our all stars to be there, and and it's a shame that people like LeBron, the Anthony Edwards, the Zion Williamson, and, and kind of a shame, and I hate to put it on LeBron, hey, but he but he started this. LeBron started this with the all stars not competing in that. Like everybody used to, it was like a badge of honor. You went there, you competed. You didn't care about how it looked or whatever you did. Because LeBron does a windmill and Chip Chip the Wawa does a windmill. It looks it's just different. Like LeBron could do it. It's just it just it just gets your eye and it gets you into it. What, what's his name, but Nick? Scrap all that. I'm all into the three point contest. I wish they would add sixteen players to it. I'm I'm all down for it to be a sixteen to eight to four to two. I know that's a lot of shooting and you could take out all the gadget all the gadget things that they added, the, the five-point shot and all the deep ones. You can still have it there, but just make it two-point and not all the other things and just have the three-point contest be longer because it has taken over the All-Star weekend. That's what we want to see. We want to see all the greatest shooters. And I don't care if Steph Curry kept winning. Let's add him again. Let's add Clay Thompson. Let's add Damon Lillard. Let's um let's get the shooters that we want to see, the All-Stars in the, in the contest, not um Chip Chickawawa cousin. I mean. Let's let's get these people in there. Um, the dunk contest. I don't even know who's in there this year. I think we still get. Um, I don't even know who's in there, bro. It's it's crazy. But um, Jalen Brown. Oh, at least we got one off. So we do have Jalen Brown in there. We got Mac Mac Daddy, um, and then somebody from I don't even know many more. This is this is becoming a, a laughing stock thing, and um. Yeah, topping. Um, yeah, kill that, kill that, kill that. Let's go to three point contest. Let's do sixteen players in the in the, in the three point contest, and let's just move on from there. You ready for me, or you want to talk? About, did you Thanks. look at what happened? Rudy, with my do you have any thoughts? Uh, my thoughts are: is I hate it. I hate the whole All Star Weekend. I think it's a waste of time. <laughs> why, why am I shocked, Nick? Why uh, am I shocked? You, 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 you know, because I grew up to different. I grew up to different basketball. When like, they I can't. When they comp- when it was competitive, when it was fun to watch, for like, four quarters. Yeah, for four quarters, they played ball. Like it wasn't this garbage that we're watching now. Like where they're just throwing the ball off the backboard. Someone get out of the way so he can dunk. You move out of the way so he can shoot. No one wants to defend anybody. It's not a basketball game. Like this is an opportunity for to see the stars of the league battle each other. 
Like there was pride for that crap back in the day. There was a pride. Magic Johnson wanted to win. Isaiah wanted to win. Bird wanted to win. Jordan wanted to win. And these guys wanted to win. These dudes today don't even care. They don't even want to. They really, they really don't even want to be there. If you want to be honest about it, they'd rather be at home, um, vacationing for four days, having more load management rest time. Because you know, back in the day, the All Star Weekend was like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and they were back on the court by mm-hmm. Tuesday. And now they get a whole week and a half off, so they're getting ten days off. You know, to for which. They really play for, you know, a half an hour. They don't play hard. The whole, what is that thing they call at the end, that that fourth quarter thing where it's um the first to whatever points. Four points, the Kobe thing. That well, is- yeah, but they have a name for it, and I don't know what the name of it is. But, I mean, that, even that, like, it's it makes it a little bit more. They, they, they finally seem like they want to be a little bit more competitive then. But it shouldn't take that. It shouldn't come down to. <clears throat> three quarters of absolute trash where no one's defending anybody. No one cares. And the game is a complete, I have not, I don't watch the all-star game. I don't watch the basketball all-star. I might flick it on when I, when I see that they're going into the fourth quarter to see that they actually give a shit about playing because they don't care about playing. And it's no different than the, than the, than the stupid pro bowl bogus nonsense. We just watched. It's not as bad. No, this is worse actually, because they're Ooh. actually playing the, this is worse. They don't even have pads on. Really. <laughs> no, they're not. Exactly. They're, they're not even playing a game. They're playing a different game. Here we're playing basketball. And, it, I mean, for what it's worth, it, it is probably the worst brand of ba- basketball that you've ever seen. I guarantee you this year, it'll be over 200 points by each team. But, I guarantee you. There's 150 being put up a game now. This thing will have over 200 points scored by both teams. But, and it won't be competitive. Now, it's to be a rec league honor game. Like, Shit, it's me versus the best person on the opposite side at my yeah. same position. But I also get to play with four other supreme athletes that I yeah. don't normally get to play with during Monday through Sunday. And now I get to play with these guys, and we're going against the other team top players. And we want to show them that I'm the motherfucking best, and you can't do nothing about it. And you're best, and I'm the best, but I'm going to show you who's motherfucking better. And now we're not seeing that, like, like, I don't care who you, like, if you're a competitor, you want to win every game. That's why I show respect to Russell Westbrook, because he don't give a goddamn. He could be in that all-star game, and that's what we call it, the Russell Westbrook special, because he's going to go hard the whole game. And, they be like, and people hold that against him. They're like, no, everybody else should be playing it the same way, because this is what the fans want to see. It's good to win championships, but if you step in that game and you bust ass that night, Man, you look that differently, man, because like your team might not just be good enough to be to win a game, to win a championship, but now you're playing with all great players and then you're showing that you're the best in that situation. Now we're like, hmm, maybe if that guy had a couple players on his team, he could get them to where they need to go. But no, these players look at it in a, such a different manner that it's just Man, it's upsetting that to, to, to know that that's what the yeah. game has come down to, man. And, there should be such a fun atmosphere. It should be so competitive. But it's just not. As far as the dunk contest is concerned, you throw it in the trash can. You don't need to do it anymore. It's a waste of time. You've seen every dunk under the sun. The real players don't want to do it. And, I mean, I ain't going to. LeBron James, for 20 years, would not be in this competition, and we know why. He was afraid he would lose. Because he's not a great competition dunker. He's a power game dunker. His dunks in games look unbelievable. Booty. If right. LeBron did his game dunks in the in a in an All Star game, in an All Star time. I don't think he wins. You still you, you, you think he beats Aaron Gordon under his legs over the mascot type thing? Because of his name and he's still bringing the, the he, you No, know, people people will watch but he won't win. If he did he it in win. the first few years, he would have won. Yeah, in the first few years, but now Let's like how he, high he was jumping. But now he can't jump as high. So but but I just think that the fact that that guy has not never, never been in this thing is he embarrassing. He fucked it up. Huh? Because Kobe was in it, MJ was in it. I mean, every high flying guy was in it. Stars, not bums. Rudy. Stars. I wouldn't even You know what? I would rather see LeBron in a three-point contest. Like, if you're not going to do dunk, I'm not mad at it. Like, I'm not saying that he's going to win it, but I just... Why, so why doesn't he do it? I don't... I think, why do you really think why he doesn't do it? I, 
LeBron goes through a lot of things in his mind. He try to be more smart. He try to be smarter than everybody else. He think he, he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to lose in front of. He, he, don't, he doesn't want to lose an individual competition. Topics of it, and then you're gonna have people like Skip Bayless saying, oh, <clears throat> "He Jordan did it, but he won it." And then things like that. I think it actually gets to him, but it will be great for us to see as fans. We'll just. I would love to see it. I mean, who was the the three point competition? I, I love the three point competition. Amazing. I wish that I wish they go back to the way it was. Now they it's, they make they truncate it down real real tight window and what like six guys and it goes from six to three or six to, I don't know how it even goes and eight to eight, eight eight to four and then four to two or whatever it is maybe something like that. yeah I, I don't like that it used to be one on one like you you shoot against this guy it used to be eight to four four yeah. to two and two I I'd, I'd like brackets for this. And I'd like to see a three point. Now, this thing that with with Steph Curry and Ionescu, Sabrina Ionescu from the WNBA, it's embarrassing. Yeah, I'm, I'm, it's embar it's embarrassing. I don't. Know. It's embarrassing. Are they gonna play shoot from the NBA three line, or are they gonna shoot from the women's three line? Like you want to tell me who the best shooter is? You're shooting from the NBA three line, and you're using a man's ball because this crap. Where I've seen plenty of three point competitions in college. Where they show the women and the men, and they compete against each other before the final four, and the women win a lot of the times because they're playing with a ball that's smaller and shooting from closer. Twenty eight point five, and that ball, that 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 much of a difference in the ball, it goes in a lot more. So she said, play, <laughs> but, "But but 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 play with the man's ball." I just think the whole thing is absolutely stupid. And if Steph Curry loses to her, he'll never live this down. Step, step, all right. So Steph Curry's in a no-win situation. If he wins, he loses. If he loses, he wins. <laughs> but if he loses, if he loses, he loses. Into into the, to the media eye, but we know. Come on, step to step. No, no, to the media. Eye, no, but did, I guarantee you, if you ask most of the public, did you know that the women's balls are the different size than a man's ball? Most people wouldn't know the difference. No, the general public would not know the difference, and most people would not know the difference that the women's three is closer than the men's three. They wouldn't know that until they see it, and they're like, "Oh, she, she's shooting from twenty-one feet." No, it's a difference. He, he, it's a big no, it is a huge difference. It's a huge difference. I hope if she's shooting. And I know. It's, 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 <laughs> if you're shooting from twenty-one feet or twenty-four feet, there's a difference. Now, I don't want to brag about my Division One fifteen percent three-point percentage, but <laughs> it's a difference. <clears throat> big time. So I, I think that thing is terrible too. I don't like to brag about that fifteen percent. One out of eight, eight, eight. One out of every eight shots that was going in. <laughs> there was a moment where they talked about doing a dunk contest with people from the street. That was the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. Like, yeah, they can jump high. Great. No one knows who the hell they are. Nobody cares. Exactly. So but if you, what would be your what will be your top four dunk contest players you'll pick right now? In the in the NBA right now or right in history? Now, top four. You have to pick four people and put you on the spot. This is the Nick Dimes. Anthony Edwards is one. Anthony Edwards, Zion Williamson. Now, I would hope Zion Williamson wouldn't blow his leg out in this competition. That's probably That's why he doesn't do it. Um, Anthony Edwards, Zion Williamson. I'll tell you what, I'd like to see Russell Westbrook. Right he now. Just, he's missing man, dunks man, by he's, he can't. He, he can't he, jump anymore. He's missing dunks by himself. John Morant. Uh, okay. If he's healthy, if okay. he's healthy, John Morant. Come on, come on, Rui, come on. Pick I'm gonna make you. I'm gonna make you laugh here. Pick your guy. Pick your guy. Victor Wembanyama. No way. I would love to see it. I would love to see that long ass dude bring the ball under his legs, might. and see if he can do it. One because he's so it's so he, far away from him. He's already done it before. Can you? I mean, <laughs> he might take off from the three point line. Hey, if he did that and dunked it, he's gonna win. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, that would be my. I'm sure there's someone else I could think of, but no. You know who I might think of? I might look at Jonathan Kaminga. Ooh. Yeah, Jonathan Kaminga, who's becoming a baller after he had the worst haircut in history. Yeah, he's scaring people to death. It's bad. <clears throat> he's playing great. He's playing great. Actually, oh, he's amazing. You heard what Draymond said? <laughs> 
Yeah, the cut, the the cut, what the cut made him get better? Well, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, he, said, he said him being suspended actually was a good. Yeah, one. yeah, he said that. Yeah, J- Draymond would somehow make it about himself. I mean, the only guy that's more narcissistic, think, as narcissistic as LeBron, is Draymond Green. I think it made him realize that Kaminga should have been started, but we real we course. didn't realize that. Yeah, but it also made him. I guess it made it seem that they made it that Draymond should be at the five. He's a five nowadays, so it changes so the game. So did you check out the Shannon Sharp thing with Mike Epps? Ooh, yep. Yep, yep, yep. I, I, I mean, look, man, I don't wanna I'm not I'm not the gossip brag stuff and and but you know, this is sports related, semi like sports related adjacent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How is a fit I, Mike Epps is a comedian. He was making jokes in a set about Shannon Sharp. Because of the different interviews with with Cat and I think what was her what was the, what was the last one Monique Monique Monique, Monique. Monique. but it all started with you know Steve but, and well, Edric yeah. and all those people. But he tried to get her to talk about or Cat to talk about Mike Epps and he wouldn't. That was the one guy he didn't talk about. But how the hell are you threatening to fight somebody over a podcast? Like you're fifty four years old or fifty two years old. You have a replaced hip, so, and you're sitting here threatening to fight somebody over your podcast, talking about, we'll see if you're about that. Like, grow the, Shannon Sharp, Shannon Sharp, grow the fuck up. You're worth a half a billion dollars probably now based on your podcast. You'd have to be the biggest fucking idiot on the face of the earth. Looking right into my camera, like Stephen A says, give me the camera. <laughs> give me my camera. You'd have to be the biggest fucking idiot on the face of the earth to be threatening people on fucking YouTube. It's recorded. Literally, what he did was a crime. He could be arrested. Shannon Sharp is six foot three, six four, two fifty five, built like a tank. But Mike Epps probably ain't been in a fight since next Friday. <laughs> or Friday after next, or Friday after the third, or whatever the hell last Friday he was in, he ain't been in a fight. He got his ass kicked every time, and he said it in his response: "I don't fight. I go. I'm baba." So what the hell are we talking about? Like, so, grow up. This is the same man that tried to challenge the Memphis Grizzlies. Grow up. You're too old to be so fucking childish, bro. I'm 46 years old. The last thing in my brain is fighting somebody. I will take a month to heal. It's dumb. Grow up. Because if I'm Mike Gibbs, I'm like, hit me, please. And I'm going to sue your ass, you stupid clown. I don't think. Go ahead. I mean, technically, it wasn't a crime what Shannon said. Actually, it is. It's it's, it's assault. It was implied. And if I'm if I am now afraid, if I am now afraid for my sake, that can call the police. That man said on camera, "If I see you, we'll see what you're about. If you're yeah. about that, what he that threatened mean? him. What he threatened mean? him. No. Anyone with sense knows he threatened what, him. Come on. What are you about? Like, is 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 this the Nick? Is this Nick's newest LeBron argument? No, I'm just saying. What are you about? Or do you do you want to fight? Because if you want to fight, then we can fight. Like, that Why would he want to fight? He didn't ask to fight. Because Shannon Sharp is the one that's no, offering to fight. No, Shannon, what Shannon was mad about was that he said that Mike Epps lied on his name about his podcast. He said that. that, that, that he Mike said he Epps DM'd him. Mike he Epps, said it. Mike Epps went on there and said that, you know, that Shannon was like, hey, come be on my show. Come be on my show. And Shannon like. I ain't never said it. He said, I'm okay with you tell him, talking about everything else. You know, all the gay things that they're saying about him and all and all those things that come with it. He's like, I'm okay with that. But now you're saying that I came out my way to be like, hey, I want you on my show. And Shannon like, I never did that. You, you really the one that did that. And so Shannon was mad about that. But, I mean, I am, I'm going to agree with you on the part that, come on, Shannon, relax yourself and relax that hip. AARP is around the corner. And, and, and we're trying to keep the hip together. Like You're like one hip push away from being like on the ground. This, like, this, like this, Let it go. Like The whole thing with the Memphis team, he said he blacked out. But 
You're too old to be doing that thing, man. But you know what? That's what you like, Rudy. That's what you like. You like what do the, I like? You like the old school football. He has no. Old- what I no because you know what the problem with the Memphis thing was? If a fan does that, they're in jail. They're in jail. That they're going to jail, bro. Shannon Sharp does it. He don't even leave his seat. All these players crying about. He called me fat. He called me this. He called me that. I'm ejecting them from the building because I'm a big ass pussy like most of these NBA players are nowadays. He freaking went onto the court to start a fight with the Memphis Grizzlies. They didn't start the shit with him. He started with them. Grow up, dude. Like, grow up. And, and this thing was about Mike Epps comedy show. It's a comedy show. It's not serious. Shit will get made up to make it funny. So yes, Mike Epps has come back and said, yeah, I DM'd you. It's a comedy show. If you're that hard up, bro, Shannon, you need some help because I would. we would love to have a freaking podcast that gets freaking 50 million views on one video. <laughs> we'll be having a party. And this man is sitting here whining because some comedian said something about him in a skit. Hey. Oh, Lord, grow up, you fucking old man. Rip, rip the shreds. Mike Ebbs should take one kick to the hip, and that man will be on his ass when it, that metal Mike, hip pops out. Mike Epps is kind of old, too, so. He is. That's why they, he says, I don't fight. I just. So that's a crime. He just said he going to pop, pop, pop him. Yeah, they both will go to jail for that. But, I mean, if you tell me that Shannon Sharp wants to fight me, I'm, I'm going to be calling the police, man. After, or, or I'm gonna call the police. Like I'm calling the cops. I, I, Shit, I don't care. I can I'm take, old man. I don't heal that way. I could take Shannon. Right now. I'm fat, bro. I'm fat and out of shape. That man is still six three, six four, two fifty five, built like a brick. A brick. Mind you, he still parks in handicap spots because of his broken hip. They showed him at Fox when he left Fox. He's parking in a handicap spot. I'm like, come on, man. But he had just had surgery at that point. Come on, man. Come on now. Like, come on. There's a person in a there's a person in a wheelchair who who's roll who's rolling from the back of the parking lot because he took the handicap spot. My That's hip. a whole nother episode. I see a lot of uh young men <clears throat> with handicap tags. I'm not gonna yeah. call them out. It's kind of crazy. Um, I see them guys, in the parking lot. If you guys lot have a hookup house. on it, please reach out to come on now. Uh Donald would like one. Um, but that being said, guys, <laughs> said, guys, this was an amazing episode. We're we're going to wrap up now. I'm glad to be back with my guys. Um, they gave you the bonus episodes. I wasn't a part of it, but I was able to link in and see all the comments. You guys are commenting and our subscribers are going up and we want to see where this thing can go. You know, this thing is getting really excited. We're getting more fun. I think we're getting sharper. I think you guys can agree. And uh, yeah, Don signing out. Give the guys the last final thoughts, and then we're wrapping up. Um, first and foremost, shout out to Donald here, lady, for taking care of him this week. Renee, shout out to Renee. Shout out to Renee. Renee. Last week was tough on my boy. She was out there. <laughs> no, the week before last week. The week before. Did you meet her at John Jay? Was, Did I meet her at what? It was tough. You, you, did you get that one? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was. You made her at John Jay. <laughs> but my final remarks is going to be about the Super Bowl. Um, I already talked about Brock Purdy, how he played amazing. But I'm gonna go back to the Usher concert. Um, that is entirely too long. We already touched on it. And being somebody who who tore his Achilles because um, I mean, it probably is going to go anyway. But my offense had the ball for twelve minutes. 10 minutes on the drive, and then we went back out there on the second play. I just popped it. So to see Greenlaw go out there and just, you know, after a long time just sitting down like that and just trying to get hyped to get back out there on the field, his his Achilles just to go in the biggest moment of his career, trying to win a championship, it was sad to see, man. I just wish, I, I, I know it's a spectacle that day, but we have to take care of our players. We have to look out for them. It's it's a big moment. It's important for them also. But like Rudy said, maybe, you know, we break down the halftime show to the beginning, you know, and maybe a little bit later. But we we can't have 
players waiting 45 minutes to play a game. They played, they got all their adrenaline popping, and they're going to tell them to sit down. They're going to say, keep warm. Keep warm? Bitch, how? Bitch, how? I can't. I'm trying my best. And now you want me to go back out there and go full speed at a level that I probably didn't play at most of the season because this is the most important game of the season. And now you want me to go back full speed after I sat for a damn near an hour? Come on, man. We're asking for it, man. Protect these players. I love the Usher concert, but come on, NFL, we got to do better. We got to find a way to engage our fans, but take care of our players. That's what I got to say. That was great. That's great, actually. I mean, <clears throat> you hit it on the nose. You hit it on the nose. There's nothing for me to add. I agree with you. I would just put it at the beginning of the game. They, I mean, they have like a five and a half hour pregame as it is. I mean, hell, it's a pregame from like nine o'clock in the morning now. You know, it's it's pregame all day. So pop them out, pop them out there at five forty five. People will get in the building earlier, and then you can play real football. Because um, I just think that sucks. Um, but overall, you know, it, it, I just want to say I'm really proud of what we've done here in the in the last six weeks. And um, I, you know, again, we appreciate everything that ha- all you all of the people that have supported and subscribed and and followed and, and shared our videos. Uh, we're going to keep uh, coming back out here. Now we're going to be hitting basketball season um, and baseball season. So, Nick, you better start watching some baseball. Um, we have some big UFC fights coming up. The Florida Marlins my- place? Uh, uh, yeah, the Miami Marlins. Um, you know, we have a big fight this weekend uh, in UFC, and then there's a, a big fight in Miami, and then UFC 300. So there's going to be some different topics now because I refuse to talk about football for freaking 12 months. <laughs> Although I tell you this, when college football starts up again, if you thought I have a problem with LeBron James, who do you think I detest? The Miami Hurricanes? Why would I detest Miami Hurricanes? Um, drives, this guy drives me crazy. He no, thinks he's, he's not had, hard to find. He's not left. hard, he's not oh, hard to find. Oh, Lord. Gonna I'm gonna have a weekly oh. dose of Dion. I'm gonna have a I'm gonna have a weekly dose of Dion. It, 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 while he tells his players that they suck and that the, and they suck this, they suck that. Oh, just for them to go four and eight all over again. They won't go four and eight. They, they might go six and six. Eight that's and four. About it. You wanna bet? Yeah, hundred. Hundred bucks. They won't go eight. Let's, and you heard let's, it let's give the fans something exciting to look forward to. Yeah. Well, oh, you'll get them. Trust me. I'll, I'll be because Dion is no, no, for no doubt, gonna provide hey, you hey, lots hey, Nick, of content. Hey, Shout out to Shador. <laughs> Shador, <laughs> is that a Power Ranger watch? Yes, yeah, no, a Power Paw Ranger Patrol. Rolex. Paw Patrol. It's a Paw Patrol oh, Rolex. Paw Patrol. You fully initiated now, and it's li- it lights up too. Hey, You're shout fine. out to all the dads in the world. You know, hey, being a dad is. Hey, I, 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 I'm having another babe. Hey, for everyone that that wants to know, I'm having another kid. At the ripe age of 46 years of age, due end of May, beginning of June. So I will throw my cash app up there if you want to. I can do it like the, I can, I can do it like the women do it. It's my birthday type bull crap. Here's a cash app. Send me some money. I'm a, I'll post my cash app and you can send my wife some money so we can buy her whatever we want to buy her. You know, for, you know, for this new, the newfound push present that did not exist a decade ago. <laughs> like, don't, oh, don't get me started. What the fuck is listen, the guys, listen, you know, We're going to wrap this up before we're hey, here. Where are we going for Valentine's Day tomorrow, Donald? I wrote all my friends. I say, for push present. And Donald hey. said, yeah, this is the new thing that they're doing. I say, get the fuck out of here. Hey, what, about, what about Valentine's Day tomorrow, fellas? I don't celebrate Valentine's Day. Never have in my life. Never will. That's just my stance. And we're going to leave it at that. Nick. 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 Baby. Crispy. Crispy. You bet I'm not celebrating it. I mean... <laughs> You might as well not do anything. Don't do shit. Man. Come on, man. I am ready. Y'all missed it. Oh, my God. Yeah, never, never have, never will. Um, but shout out to all the guys that are going to be dreadful tomorrow and um, not excited. So shout out to all the, all the, all the chumps of the world. That have this to is the tomorrow. dumbest day in history. It is. I agree. I hate the it. Ad, the advertiser's holiday. Shout out to all the advertisers. But I got I got You saw my Gucci shoes, uh, Nick? No. You didn't see the Gucci that my wife got me for Valentine's Day? This shit? Yeah. 
I posted it yesterday in the story. Okay. That was a very yeah, pair of Gucci uh, high tops. Okay. I get taken care of. You do get taken care of. <laughs> look at you. Oh, oh, look at you, Rudy. Oh, That's and again, you. champions. So proud of these kids. I'm so proud of what they did. We were undefeated 10-0-1. The last two seasons were 21-0-2. Undefeated back-to-back -back champion, City of Pompano Beach. Let's go. With that being said, a shout-out to the young, young, young people being <clears> champions. <throat> uh, come on now, Rudy. Give them the handles before we jump out. Uh, uh, come on, come on uh, Instagram is come on now podcast on TikTok and uh, Twitter. It's come on now pod. And of course, you know, you just click right through to subscribe on YouTube and Spotify. You have Spotify, right? What's the, is it come on now? Yes. Come on now. Come the, on podcast. Out, the podcast. Come on. The podcast. Thank you guys for tuning right. in. We will see you next week with another <laughs> eventful episode. Have a good one, guys. All right. <laughs>